The Allen Institute for Cell Science is able to do something that the community of discovery researchers can't, building extensively vetted pluripotent cell lines for the community to use. And I think having disease collection lines available for the community to access really brings a lot more people into the field and makes it possible for a larger scientific community to study disease in the right context. The Allen Institute is really excited to release its first disease collection, and they will highlight three different diseases, cardiomyopathy, laminopathy, and skeletal. These are really serious diseases. Some of them affect the heart muscle, some of them affect skeletal muscle throughout the body, and others affect the uh, DNA, which can have really wide-ranging effects throughout the body. Being able to study these mutations and these diseases in a dish, in a very controlled manner, allows people to understand what is happening in those cells compared to the healthy cells, and is a really powerful tool for the research community. So we're excited to be part of a collaboration with the Allen Institute, folks at University of Washington, Stanford, UC Santa Barbara, and we started with a list of myosin mutations that have been linked to clinical variants, uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, what does that mean? It's a disease in which the heart muscle wall becomes thick, and it becomes so thick that it sometimes blocks the ability of the blood to move through the heart. It's actually the leading genetic cause of heart disease in the U.S. and one of the leading causes of sudden death in young people. If we know what causes a disease, then we can know when to start that treatment. Maybe some of the treatment needs to occur in kids before they even manifest the disease if they carry the mutation. You can't convince people to do that unless you have hard evidence in a cell that, in fact, early treatment is going to be beneficial. Most of the study that we do using human tissue, for example, is at the end stage of the disease. What we really want to know is how is the disease initiated? What are the causal events for the disease? And then how does that progress through time? And these cell lines allow us to do that. In these cell lines that we're studying, they are mutations causing diseases, in our case, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which has you know, quite significant consequences, including heart failure and death. So in order to find new treatments, you need to have a model system to screen for candidates of drugs. We are using that drug in the cells we've gotten from the Allen Institute to ask one question, do all patients with different mutations respond to the drug the same way? So there are two ways to do that. I can give the drug to a patient with a known mutation and wait a year or two and see if they get better or not. Or I can take cells with that patient's mutation in the dish, treat it with the drug, and if it responds appropriately, I have a pretty good idea that drug is going to work in that patient. If we did not have the cell line, we would have to take at least extra two to two and a half years to generate them ourselves. So the fact that Allen Institute, when we were you know, notified that we were going to be able to get this funding, is able to then very quickly use the engineering tool that they have and do this in a massively parallel process to create seven, eight different mutations right away. I think you know, that made a world of difference. We really want people to use these cells. And so all of the data that we've produced with these cell lines, all of the quality control that we've done on them is readily available on our website. I think myself and many colleagues in the community have actually adapted some of the workflows that the Allen Institute uses because they've been so clearly disseminated to the community. Working with the team at the Allen Institute has also been really fun because it's a really dynamic group of enthusiastic scientists who are just super curious and excited to see what their platform technologies can be used for and all the potential questions that they'll enable. I think it really adds a new dimension to cell biology. Now we have the capacity to look at multiple variables at once and actually be able to make sense out of that in a living system. And that's an aspect that I think is gonna revolutionize probably our understanding of the biology. Now, instead of these cells being sold to investigators for thousands and thousands of dollars, they're being distributed to anybody who feels that they can derive benefit from them, and that's going to help cure diseases. There's no question about that.